we have got to talk about the lockout, right? The negotiations are ongoing, and right now things continue to look perilous and a little bit sad. Even though it's a legitimate update we have for you, we are not terribly excited about it. The MLB and the Players Association met a couple of days ago, and basically it didn't go well. Lots of proposals back and forth, lots of uh, discussion of service time, lots of discussion of pay, and basically nobody wants to agree to the other group's terms. Right, Brad? Isn't that... Does that summarize much, it? That, that sums, are, <laughs> sums it up right there. Let's move on. No, okay. it, it, it's exactly how it goes. And that's exactly how it's yeah. been. We knew that's what it was going to be like. And that's why we were, I mean, at least I was a little stressed out when nothing was going on in December because these two sides don't like each other. They don't want to, they really don't want to meet in the middle. Like it's going to be tough seeing which side budges first because that's yeah. what it's going to take. Somebody's going to have to give up a little bit more, but neither side wants to. But yeah. what what went on with this meeting last week was the the owners came to the table finally, and they said, this is what we have. And they understand the player's complaint with service time mani- manipulation. Even if the owners and the teams don't want to admit that it's going on, I'm sure that they're willing to admit that it sure looks like it's going on. Right. right? And they admit and, that it's a bad look, even though... They don't want to admit to having participated. Exactly. So what they did was they brought this, this uh, I guess, proposition to the table that teams would be rewarded for bringing guys up. So if you have a top 150 prospect who you bring up and he spends the entire team with the entire season with the team and he ends up finishing top five in rookie of the year, Cy Young, MVP, any of those, yep. the team is given a draft pick. Now, my first thought was, that's a pretty good little carrot, right? For bad. a team. Yeah. You because think. these teams love their draft picks because that means that's a cheap player, right? Yep. But the problem that I have with it is that last season, uh, the Mariners called up their number one prospect at the time, Jared Kelnick, and he struggled big time the first month, month and a half he was up. Like, I always go back to it as like an 0 for 38 stretch. Like, it was brutal. It was ugly. It was painful to watch. Now, if the Mariners had been incentivized to keep him up rather than send him down, give him a chance to get his mind right and kind of regroup, we could have seen 0 for 50, 0 for 60, 0 for 70 because things were not, weren't going to turn around anytime soon. Yeah. Right. So him going down was actually beneficial for him. And he played a huge role in the success the Mariners had in September. That's right. He, Everything seemed to click for him down here in Phoenix. He drove in the winning run in an extra inning game against the Diamondbacks. And from then on out, he had a very good month, finished the season very strong. And I'm I'm convinced that, that wouldn't have happened if he hadn't gone back down to AAA. Teams being incentivized to keep guys up and not send them down or not like delay their their promotion because of a draft pick, like I don't know that that would necessarily bode well for everybody. Another Mariner is Mike Zunino. Probably could have spent one more year in the minor leagues and would have been an all-star. He's an all-star this last year. But he's honestly, he's a 4A all-star is what he is. Yeah, he he's, sure not, is. he's not a big league all-star. Right. But he could have been a big league all-star if he had more time to develop. Here's my thing. Uh, they want these top 100 players to be on the opening day roster. Well, mm-hmm. if you're going to do that, you have to give us another roster slot. Because... We can't sit there and baby somebody, or, mm-hmm. you know, develop somebody. Let's call it what it is. We can't sit there and develop somebody effectively while we're trying to win ball games and right. every day counts. So mm-hmm. if you're going to want us to keep the guy on the roster, that's okay, but give us another roster slot so we can do that. Call it the development roster slot or something like that so that we know that person's going to get some looks at the big league level. They're in the clubhouse. They're being mentored. This is perfect solution for that 4A player who's Mm -hmm. almost there is really, really close and has the chance with the right culture, the right climate, the right atmosphere, coaching, et cetera. If they can give them one more roster slot, I think that would be a more agreeable, but that's not what happened. And we saw that 26 roster spot come into play. Was it 2020 with the COVID season? COVID season. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and they were going to do that anyway, but what they had to do, though, was that the players had to give up 12 roster spots in September that they expanded right. only to 28 rather than to 40 because owners like, I don't want to be paying 10 extra guys to be in the clubhouse who aren't big league players. It's like, right. Well, OK, but yeah, no, I think you're right, though. I think if they expanded the roster, expanded the roster to 28 period, 
you would have more guys who have a chance to come up and develop at the big league level in a big league clubhouse who are beyond playing minor league baseball, but maybe aren't quite ready yeah. for the big leagues because you see it, you see it a lot in other sports, especially mm-hmm. in the NFL. You see teams draft quarterbacks and they'll sit them for a year, two, three. Aaron Rodgers is a exhibit A of that. He sat behind yeah. Brett Favre for several years before the, the Packers ever gave him a chance. And yeah. I've seen it in the NBA with the Blazers. They drafted Amperty Simons. The kid came out at 17, wasn't NBA ready, but they're mm-hmm. like, he's going to be. Give him a year, maybe two, and he's actually shaping to be a, a really good player for the Blazers right now. That's great. That's and, great. And you can see that. You could see that happen more and more in Major League Baseball rather than guys being forced to come in and be like, well, we only have three guys on the bench. And you're one of them, so we need you to play. Even yeah. though they're not ready to play. They they're just not. need to be in the environment. That's right. And the problem is it's a pay issue again. Like here it's we go back time. again. Yeah. Because now you you know the league minimum for a guy in the active roster is way more expensive than it is at AAA. So yes. you have to take that into consideration. And that's probably why we haven't seen this come to the table. And it's a it's it a terrible shame because that's what's the best thing. For the players, it's probably the best thing to solve some competitive issues on the in the clubhouse and on the team, and it creates more slots, more jobs, more opportunities, etc. I just, oh, if it, everything didn't come back down to money, I would be this would be easier right, oh, for it, everybody. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know the other thing too is that creating some competition in the clubhouse isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't feel like no. like. The problem that Major League Baseball has is that a guy can be up at the big league level for an entire season plus and then have a bad stretch. And then they're like, we got to option you down to AAA to get your mind right. But really, like for some guys, it's like, okay, that's a great, like some guys are like, yeah, I need it. I could use some reps with a little bit easier pitching, work on my mechanics, whatever. But for some guys, it's like, I've lost it. I'm that's never going to get back. Yeah, with that exactly mind, right. with that mindset, they never will, and so it yep. ruins some guys. And that's one problem that baseball does have. Despite like my love for the minor league system and the product that it produces at the top level, is that not only are you getting guys who are like the best of the best talent wise, but you're getting guys who are the best of the best like mentally, and that's hard yeah. to do. Not yeah. everybody can do that. I agree. So, so we still don't have any progress towards spring training starting on time. Brad, do you think we're going to start on time with spring training? Or at this point, is it really just not going to happen? I'm pretty pessimistic about it. Um, I noticed that some teams, like I know the Diamondbacks, their spring training tickets went on sale over the weekend. Yep. And I was like, why would I drop a dollar on that? Yeah, if not even a single dollar. Yeah, it's not guaranteed. There's no way. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not optimistic about spring training. Spring training starting on no. time at this point, just because these these two sides are still so far apart and unwilling to budge at all. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Doesn't look good for the long term at all. I totally agree. 